finishes when the leader crosses the line after 16.45 or 4.45 Eastern Standard Time. So there's only a few minutes here. Marco, he's halved the gap in that last lap. Jason Richards, he's halved it now down to 1.4 seconds. Before that, it was a 2.8 second gap. And that's what one and a half seconds looks like on the Sandown circuit. Jason Richards started his career in Formula Ford in New Zealand. Became a junior driver with the BMW New Zealand team. He was a multiple class champion on domestic soil, but he was so impressive when Team Kiwi made their debut in V8 Supercars in 2000. And look at him, Team Dynamics, Simon Wells there. Have, have a look at Oscar. He'll, his little heart will blow straight out his ears in a minute. He'll have so much oil pressure going there at the moment. That's Kieran Wills, Kieran the team Wills. owner. Oscar's further to the left. But uh, he loves to get wound up about motor racing and you know, well wound at the moment. If Jason Richards can pull this off, and remember there's four minutes remaining, three and a half, four minutes remaining in this race, if Jason Richards can pull this off and get him and Simon Wills onto the podium, that makes Wills a back-to-back -back 500 champion. He won the corresponding race at Queensland 500, his one and only race victory. Richards has never won a race in the V8 Supercar Championship. Mark Scape has won 34 of them. Here's some more action with Paul Morris getting into trouble with Andrew Jones in the 888 car. Morris slipping, sliding, going off the track once more, and Jones joins him. It's a race against the clock, though, out at front. Scape, the lead now is 0.7 of a second. And the clock's just gone 4.42 and five seconds. So again, at 4.45, the minute the lead, once we pass that moment in time, 4.45, double zero, <laughs> as soon as the Look lead car this. crosses the control line, that's it. Now, Jason Richards is a relative rookie in V8 supercar terms. Scaife making his 144th start. Richards has only done 33 starts. It's his 34th career start in V8 supercar. Body language on Mark's car suggests that he's just a bit out of grip at the moment, Glenn. Yeah, he is for sure. He's, um, he's Look at really this. struggling for traction. He's going to have a crack at him. No, he decides to back off at the moment. Absolutely, there's problems with Mark Scave's car. It's totally unsettled. A race against the clock at the end of an extraordinary day. Richards has a look around the outside. Now he'll have a look at the inside. He's right up behind the number one Holden Racing Team Commodore. Maximum pressure. The Kiwi's got to keep it cool here, though. Mark Scave is pretty clever. Oh, side by side in this sort of hand-to-hand -hand combat. What can he do here? Where is he? He's still there. So he has got a real tough task on his hand, even though Scape oh, is mate, a great here. job. It's 4.43. They have to finish at 4.45. So this is incredible stuff. What a finish for the better electrical 500. Hard under brakes into turn one. Scape gets the position. Slippery, slippery track conditions. Almost a touch. Scapers. Jason Richards. We hear the scape has switched off his red rain light. That's the light, bright red light they have to have on the back of the car. Now, whether that's going to affect... Oh. Switch the wiper off as well. The legality of the car in terms of finishing the race. Without its rain light, only time will tell. Look at how wide he's making this HRT Commodore as they come up the back straight. Mark Scape is pretty much shutting down everything he can find inside the cockpit. That line that uh, Jason was taking to try and go around the outside at turn eight could reveal a spot for him if he can get underneath Scafie when they get to, to nine. Less than one minute remaining. Are they going to cross the line before? Yes, they will. So there's going to be another lap after this one. How long can Scafie hold him out? Down the inside goes Jason Richards. The oh, they both go. go! Oh, no, he's gone into the they gravel. They both go! No. Jason yeah. Richards can't salvage it from there. Oh, oh. Scafie gets out. Unbelievable. Can't get it going. Believe it. Fuck! Absolutely unbelievable in the space of Kieran Will says it all as Jason Richards finishes what was a great scrap with Mark Scape in the ditch and Scape has been let off the hook, no question about it. He's going to have to complete one more lap. It's 4.44 and 50 seconds, so that means one more lap. He's missed it by 10 seconds. Mark Scape is going to survive, assuming his car can go another three kilometres. He's had all sorts of battles thrown at him, and who would have thought that Jason Richards and Team Dynamic Car 44, when looking at the top spot on the podium, found themselves staring into the gravel. 38 seconds, the gap back to Luke Yildon's down to 29 seconds now. The Ford in 
15 seconds escape has a half a minute buffer over at the next place car if he can lift this one home he'll take the 500. everybody's had a crack at him including the heavens and at the end of the day these guys both scape and todd kelly have shown that they've not only got themselves the car speed and the setup and everything back in order but also the pure determination and skill to hold off challenges like that in awful conditions scape goes past the guy that could have claimed the spot off him the rain continues to pour down mark scape he's not going to start breathing and celebrating just yet because anything can happen what a finish the clock has ticked over and after a blue blitz in the championship mark scape and todd kelly turn the tide and win the sandown 500. scape's first win since the first round of the season todd kelly's second win of his career what an effort and what a great effort too from this young man luke yulden in car 31 and Stephen Ellery, the super cheap auto Ford, claims second position, their best ever finish. Good beauty, Lukey, that's the go, mate. You know what position you finished in? Hey, tell me. P2, Lukey, P2 to the mighty Holt Space Ha, ha, ha. The words he wanted to hear, and Luke Yulden deserves to be congratulated on surviving an incredibly tough day and his first crack at Sandown in a V8 supercar. Stephen Ellery also did a terrific job behind the wheel and in qualifying. And Russell Ingall, amazingly enough, after the drama early in the race, got back to fifth position at the conclusion of this one. So that keeps some points tucked away in their basket and keeps their, them in the game. Grant? Stephen Ellery, heart in the mouth stuff, that. Oh, I have to admit I'm nearly crying at the moment. Um, this has been a big couple of years for the team. We've gone through some some real bad times. And, uh, you just don't know what this means to us. It's a, um, you know, Luke Yulden came of age today and so did our race team. And, and, and we've shown people what we're about and uh, what we're going to do in a, in a few weeks' time at Bathurst. Well, mate, I'll tell you what, if this is anything to go by, it'll be a sensational, uh, at least a sensational opportunity for you. But I just heard the guys on the radio telling Luke that he finished second. You're not going to tell me that he didn't know or you tried to keep that away from him, surely? No, we didn't tell him because we didn't want him to know. He was happy running around in third, so that was only like one lap to go after Jason went off. So, um, look, we've had our fair share of luck today, and we'll admit that before anyone. But like I said, we needed this more than anyone here, and um, that's a big moment for our race team. I guess to a large extent, as we talked about earlier on in the day, as a matter of fact, that uh, you know endurance racing is about staying out of trouble, and that's what you managed to do. Yeah, we did that today. We had a um, on, we had an awesome car that was able to compete with anyone, um, you know. But at the end there, we were we were a lap ahead of Murphy, and we just told Luke to um, run around and hold his spot and uh, don't do anything silly and keep it on the black stuff, and we'll get third. And um, we've had a bit of a bonus, and, and we're one step higher than that. So um, no, it's just that's brilliant. That's great. Congratulations. Thank you. Mark Scaife, that was a remarkable drive. Just tell us about those last few laps. It didn't sound like the car was 100%. Well, it wasn't for it. It had the vault alarm on all the time and uh, better turn the screen off and turn the wipers off and turn everything off. Couldn't see anything, but uh, great finish. Fantastic. It's been a remarkable day for you and, uh, and you've come through it all. How does it feel? It's been a a lean couple of months. You've had some, some race victories and you've been close to, to Ambrose at times, but this must feel very sweet indeed. Yeah, look, our speed today was very, very good, Greg. Uh, I feel a bit sorry for Jason Richards there the last bit because uh, he drove very well on the rain, but I couldn't even see where he was. The all inside of the car was, uh, was fogged up, but uh, it was a great result for the guys. I mean, they built this car. It's the latest car. You know, we're on the comeback trail. Todd did a good job as well. A tough start for him, but he clawed back in that first stint. Yeah, look, he, I think he drove very, very well. It's one of the best drivers I've ever seen him put on. And uh, he would used his head. He got up there with Ambrose. And uh, our car speed, as I said, was very, very good. To you and the Holden Racing team, enjoy. Well done, Marks, mate. Thank you. For the first time since 1989, Mark Scaife wins the Sandown 500 again. A great performance with Todd Kelly. An extraordinary day's racing. We'll be back right after this. So near and yet so far, for one fleeting moment, Jason Richards thought that he had scored his first and what a major V8 supercar victory it would have been. Instead, 
Mark Scaife managed to limp across the line and take a victory that is so important to his championship chances. There is more drama than a Shakespearean play here at Sandown as we recap the results. Kelly and Scaife take the win in what has been a good comeback for Holden as well. Ellery and Yulden, who would have thought they would have been the best performed forward this afternoon? Remarkable performance that and special mention to young Luke for guiding that car through to the end under enormous pressure from everywhere. Murphy, what a comeback after we thought might have been a race-ending drama for him here in pit lane. The rear wing, we, we, he took the belts off at one stage. We thought he wouldn't get back in the race. He gets on the podium. Brad Jones and John Bow struggled through with difficulties as well to take fourth position. And Russell Ingle, after the mishap at the end of the main straight, this was the race-leading car for so long. A lap down, but back up in the top five. And precious points for Marcus Ambrose to try and hold on to the championship against so many challenges. Stephen Richards and Larry Perkins in a car that they were weren't too happy with not long ago, but managed to get into the top six. Radisic and Rydell, Paul Radisic on top of qualifying and saving himself and the car in a tumultuous race. So full of incidents here and the crowd have done very well indeed. 24,000 people here today and over three days, 41,000 at Sandown. A hardy lot and Commodore has come back. The defending champion, Todd Kelly, reliving the glory from here at Sandown last year. And bear in mind that Jason Richards, Simon Wills performance was exceptional. They finished up in 12th place, in fact, because they were on the lead lap when that incident happened. Even though Jason couldn't get the car back on the track, it was classified as finishing because Scaife, just down the road, managed to take the chequered flag. They deserve so much more, though. Simon Wills, of course, won the Queensland 500 last year, but for a different team. He's with Stone Brothers then and David Bernard. But for Team Dynamic to come up and do so well, that is certainly the best story that wasn't on this podium today. Stephen Ellery and Luke Yildon. Soak it up, gentlemen. Luke Yildon, uh, an exceptional performance as we see Mark Osler getting up there and getting ready to make the presentations. Great story for Murphy. And Rick Kelly as well. Two Kellys on the podium. So many stories unfolding from the Sandown 500 this afternoon. And when you look ahead a few weeks to the Bob Jane Team Arts 1000 at Bathurst, you know that there are cars that are better prepared than we thought they might have been. So there will be more contenders than we thought. We thought it might be about half a dozen leading cars up there. But now we suddenly see that there are teams that are race ready and know, more importantly, they know, they have the confidence that they can compete with the big guys. Certainly Jason Richards and Team Dynamic will go away thinking, we can do this. And so many others who have been quick across the weekend will think the same. Don't forget also on your home of motorsport, that's the grid, at least the top eight, for the final European round of the championship at Monza before they go overseas to conclude the championship. And also on your home of AFL. Finals time, Collingwood versus Port Adelaide. Saturday, September 20. That will be an awesome game, and so will this. Who would have thought Sydney would make it so far, but they will play Brisbane. An all-interstate match for the Melbourne fans. And could they get into the grand final? One of them will. We'll take a break here from your home of motorsport. We've got news coming up. We'll say goodbye for now. He's got glass in his eyes here. Yeah.